I have finally brought myself to attempt to make my first Brewmaster guide. As some of you might know, I've been playing Brewmaster for the last few years as an alt, but this time around, I've finally decided to do a full main swap to it, and I've never been happier. So in this guide, I'm going to walk through the changes that are coming in patch 10.0.5, the general talent build that you might see, alongside some optional talent builds, including a minimal button build. I'm going to go over stats, rotation tips, and also defensive cooldown usage. Of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You can also join my Discord for all things related to tanking. But let's dive in. Quick disclaimer though. Most of what I talk about in this video will be centered around Mythic Plus and Dungeon content. If you're looking for additional information, I highly recommend checking out Wowhead or the Peaks of Serenity Discord. I'll try to leave those links in the description below. Also, with the new talent options, I fully understand that there's going to be a quote, meta build, but I typically support the idea that an individual can play whatever they prefer, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm going to cover what's been popular, but also a few optional changes a player can make to help change the dynamic of the class. Last but not least, feel free to use the timeline below to jump around to any section that you'd like. But with that out of the way, let's get started. I'm not going to spend much time going over everything that is going to be changing in patch 10.0.5, since I actually made a video about those changes, and you can find that here. If you missed it, go check it out. I go over all the changes in a little more detail, but I do want to quickly cover it, so let's talk about it. One of the largest changes is the new talent, accompanied by a few reduced costs in certain talents earlier on in the spectry. All in all, this will essentially free up one point to use early on. The other major change was mostly tuning around certain abilities. They took our largest damaging ability, which was actually a passive called Resonating Fists, and they nerfed it by 45%. While it will still be a strong option, it's going to find itself sitting a little bit lower on your damage meters. Though, accompanied with this nerf, they're actually buffing Keg Smash, Blackout Kick, Breath of Fire, and Spinning Crane Kick to compensate. This really shouldn't have much of an effect on your overall, but is really shifting how our damage breakdown will look. The real benefit of this change, though, is to open up a few different talent builds in the tree. But we're going to talk about that in a bit. But yeah, that pretty much covers all of the changes for this patch. Alright, I want to take some time to talk about how a general build would look, and then I'll talk about some adaptive changes that a player can make depending on different circumstances. But the general build most players will play will look something like this. All Brewmasters will start with Tiger's Lust, and then we will need to spend 8 points in order to move on to the next tier of the tree. We can grab Calming Presence and Rising Sun Kick. Then we will find ourselves taking Detox, Paralysis along with Improved Paralysis, and then 2 stacks of Ferocity of Zuen. This leaves us with one last point. We can throw this on Soothing Mist, and while this ability will rarely ever be used, it will unlock a few strong talents along the left side of the tree later on. But now that we've spent 8 points, we will now be able to move into the second tier of the tree. This will have us immediately grabbing Spearhand Strike, accompanied by two stacks of Fast Feet. We will also want to grab Fortifying Brew, followed by the Choice Node here. There is always potential to run either or, but for this example, let's grab Expeditus Fortification. This will then unlock Strength of Spirit. Next, we can grab Dampen Harm, which is one of our strongest defensives, and then let's take Transcendence. And with this, we can then unlock and grab Ring of Peace and Diffuse Magic. These are both very strong utility and defensive options. Next, we need to spend some time opening up the left side of the tree, and we're going to do this by spending a point in Vigorous Expulsion, and then one point into Grace of the Crane. And we're going to come back here in a second. But now that we've opened up the third tier of the tree, let's grab some of those juicy nodes. We're going to sink two points into Fatal Touch, and then two points into Resonant Fists. Most players will then opt into taking Summon White Tiger Statue. While it's not the most insane DPS increase, it's one of the better options. But if you're someone who's concerned about button bloating, you can definitely opt out of taking this for another option. Assuming we're going to take Summon the White Tiger Statue, with 6 points left, we're going to then spend these on the left-hand side of the tree. We will put 1 point into Grace of the Crane, and then we can move on to Chi Wave, Profound Rebuttal, and then two points into close to heart. Now this last point can be used in a few different places. We can grab an extra charge of roll if we like, or we can choose one of the movement speed nodes between Celerity or Chi Torpedo. You can also sink this point into Generous Pour if you'd like, if you want to provide your group with a passive AoE damage reduction through Avoidance. 
It's really up to you though, or it depends on your composition that you're running with. Moving on to the spec tree, let's walk through the general progression that you might see here. Now, spec trees in general are a little bit more restrictive towards the top of the tree, and here we'll see a similar pattern. We're going to have to start with Keg Smash, and then we will want to work down both sides of the tree, picking up Purifying Brew and Shuffle. These have always been staples of the kit, so something that we're used to. Next, we're going to want to opt for both Spirit of the Ox and Gift of the Ox, granting us increased generation from Healing Spears, which will also allow for higher self-healing through Expel Harm. In order to progress and grab talents on both sides of the trees, it's pretty much required to grab Hit Scheme on the left and then choosing between Rushing Jade Wind and Special Delivery on the right. Now, most of the time Rushing Jade Wind is the preferred choice for Brewmaster Monks, but Special Delivery isn't far behind as long as it's optimized. For players who aren't a fan of the outrageous button bloating, this can be an option for making the rotation feel a little more natural and simplistic. I also want to mention here that Rushing Jade Wind was meta because there was a ton of potential from Resonant Fist procs, but now that it's been nerfed by 45%, you won't lose as much damage as you previously would if you opted into playing Special Delivery. With one point left, you can either spend your point into Healing Elixir for that on-demand heal that is off the global cooldown, or you can opt for a passive stagger reduction talent like Quick Sip or Staggering Strikes. I honestly suggest that this point be spent anywhere you want, but for players who don't like the button bloat, take something passive like Staggering Strikes, but I mostly personally enjoy playing with Healing Elixir, which is what we're going to be using in this example. And then at this point, the tree is mostly going to play out like it has been. First, let's definitely pick up some of the Brewmaster staples like Celestial Brew plus the improved talent, improved Purifying Brew, Breath of Fire, and Salsabim Strength. Oh, and let's also grab Invoke the Black Ox. At this point, we're going to shift our focus back over to the right side of the tree and grab some talents like Zen Med, Shadow Boxing Treads, and Guy Plin's Imperial Brew. Quick tangent here, this talent synergizes extremely well with our current 4 set and is the major reason why talents in the first tier like Quick Sip and Staggering Strikes do lose a little bit of value because you want to be able to maximize our Purified Stagger solely through Purifying Brew. But anyways, with three more points to spend, we have a few options. Most players prefer Take Light Brewing, but with the recent base reduction of Celestial Brew's cooldown, it's very possible to take Training of Nozao, but I only recommend this if you're extremely comfortable with the ebb and flow of your damage intake, but the mastery that you gain from this talent becomes extremely potent in the high keys. For this example, let's go with Light Brewing. We are also going to take Face Palm, and it's only because this gives us access to Counter-Strike in the third tier. Actually, most of the time you don't even need to play with Tiger Palm on your bar. Our very last point can go into this choice note here, which is either between Black Ox Brew or Bob and Weave. Black Ox Brew can be used as a solid defensive cooldown, resetting your CD on Purifying Brew, Celestial Brew, and refilling your energy. This is a great little reset button, but can definitely be the difference between surviving a pull and wiping. Bob and Weave though is still a great talent choice and is definitely a safe pick that's passive. So in this example, we are going to play Bob and Weave, but more experienced Brewmasters might want to opt in to Black Ox Brew. With the third tier unlocked, we are first going to grab Counter-Strike. This, paired with the recent buff to Spinning Crane Kick, will result in some pretty high damage output. To even further improve our damage of our Spinning Crane Kick, we're also going to sink another point into Charred Passions. Up until this point, Dragonfire Brew, which competes with Charred Passions, was the play. It's way more simplistic and provided a similar damage output to Charred Passions with much less effort. Though, with the 20% buff to Spinning Crane Kick, there is, much, there is a much larger deficit between Dragonfire Brew and Charred Passions. The Dragonfire Brew might still be taken in higher keys simply for the better optimization of other abilities, but for damage alone, especially in lower keys, Charred Passions will be the stronger choice here. We then want to sink points into Boneless Brew and Bountiful Brew. This will be followed by two points into Elusive Footwork, then Exploding Keg, and of course, Storm Stout's last keg. Taking this completely removes the minimal haste requirement for Keg Smash, allowing Brewmasters to focus entirely on other stats. With two points remaining, there are definitely options here. First, I want to talk about some of the popular choices before I go into the different talent builds. A lot of players like to put points into high tolerance. While in Red Stagger, you'll have much more haste resulting in more a more fluent rotation and cooldown recovery for certain abilities like Keg Smash, allowing for Brewmasters to actually use Celestial Brew and Purifying Brew more frequently. Some players will instead spend one of those two points into Weapons of Order. This was an ability that was a fan favorite during Shadowlands, and it acted as a solid defensive option, basically increasing the mastery of the Brewmaster by 10%, and resetting one charge of Keg Smash. This was accompanied with a damage increase on all targets hit with Keg Smash during the duration of the cooldown. 
For players who aren't a fan of the button bloat, I will go over a build shortly here, but in this case, you can spend one of your points into high tolerance and call it a day. So, this is the final tree. First, I want to talk about a build that I've been running a bunch on live servers, and it's felt pretty great, but definitely requires a little bit more thought. This has us opting out of Weapons of Order and instead picking a Blackout combo. This means that whenever we cast Blackout Kick, our next ability will be empowered. It's not every ability though, the list includes Tiger Palm, Keg Smash, Breath of Fire, Purifying Brew, and Celestial Brew. Since our tier set and this build focuses more on spinning crane kick damage, we don't really ever need to worry about Tiger Palm. Our main goal is to Blackout Kick before every single Keg Smash, and this will give us an additional 2 seconds off our Brew cooldowns, meaning that we can Celestial Brew way more frequently. Because of this, I actually will drop Light Brewing for training for more attack power since we are already getting plenty of cooldown recovery from Blackout Combo. This build is super fun and is slightly less button bloated. Speaking of button bloat, the largest complaint I hear when I post Brewmaster content is that the rotation or general abilities are just like way too bloated, and I definitely agree. With the new talent trees, we've added Diffuse and Dampen, Rising Sun Kick, Summon White Tiger Statue, Exploding Kid, Russian Jade Wind, Bonus Brew, and Weapons of Order, and several other options. Many of these abilities have been in the kit for a long period of time, but they used to compete with each other. Nowadays, you can actually take all of these, and it's just thrown on top of the pile. So, small disclaimer here, this build isn't going to be optimal, but it tries to avoid as much of the button bloat as possible while still keeping the enjoyment of the class alive. I just want all players to feel like they can play Monk and not feel overwhelmed. So what we're going to want to do here is drop a lot of the filler, minor DPS increases while keeping most of the solid defensives. In the class tree, we can drop things like Statue and we can use this point to pick up things like an extra charge of roll. In the spec tree, we can trade our healing elixir for staggering strikes. We can also drop Rushing Jade Wind for special delivery, and as I said before, it's not going to be as much of a DPS loss. You can also drop Weapons of Order for Blackout combo. Now, I still do recommend running Bonus Brew accompanied with Exploding Keg, but we've dropped now three abilities at this point. This should make the rotation much easier, and for the most part, Spinning Crane Kick in this build will do equal damage to Tiger Palm, and Spinning Crane Kick applies your two set bonus, so you can actually just take Tiger Palm off your bar. While Blackout Combo seems complicated, you can honestly hit it in whatever order you want, and it only really needs to be optimized in higher keys. I personally like this build a lot when I want to turn my brain off and just kind of zug, but let me know if it feels any better for you. The general stat weights will pretty much remain the same. Item level will always be king, but once you have the opportunity to start to be picky about your stats, you're going to want to focus on versatility, followed by critical strike and mastery, and then lastly haste. If you were to ignore any stat at all, haste would be the stat. Due to talents like high tolerance and storm south slash keg, there isn't really a benefit to having haste on all your gear. Actually, haste at all. While you should never target tertiary stats, I do want to mention that leech and avoidance are just both really strong for brewmaster. Due to the way that stagger works and our high damage output, leech typically pulls a little bit ahead of avoidance, but both are strong. I figured that I would add a section like this since Brewmaster has a lot of moving parts that allow it to deal a lot of damage and or healing. I'm calling this section buffs to track, but it's more centered around things that you should be aware of. And the single most important thing you need to be aware of is your purified chi stacks. This is a buff that you gain after clearing stagger through purifying brew. If you clear during green stagger, you'll gain one stack, yellow stagger you'll gain two stacks, and red stagger you'll gain three stacks. Pretty simple. This buff will stack all the way up to 10, and will result in a much larger Celestial Brew. This is how Brewmasters handle a good portion of their healing. It's imperative that you track these to make sure that you're getting the largest Celestial Brew possible. While not as important as Purified Chi Stacks, knowing if and when your Breath of Fire is applied to mobs is pretty important. Breath of Fire is one of your primary rotational abilities and provides not only a damage over time effect to targets, but it will also grant 5% damage reduction. Keeping this active on all enemies during a pull will result in overall less damage taken. There aren't a whole lot of buffs that make or break your gameplay or survivability unless you really want to min-max, but the last thing I would recommend is tracking the Brewmaster's Rhythm, which is part of your current 2-set bonus for this first season. Maintaining this will result in 4% more damage and 4% damage reduction. While seemingly minor, it's important for a Brewmaster to continuously maintain buffs like Breath of Fire and Brewmaster's Rhythm and even Purified Cheatum to make each pull feel stable. The rotation for Brewmasters is more or less flexible based on your talent choices, but there are some patterns that you're going to want to be aware of, and I'm going to cover those here. 
First things first, Rushing Jade Wind should be applied right before pulling, and you're going to want to maintain this every 6-8 to eight seconds during combat as long as you're talented into it. Starting a pull, it's important to start with your Keg Smash followed by a Breath of Fire. Luckily with the Salsibim Strength talent choice, your Keg Smash will actually reset the CD on your breath, allowing you to hit this order every time. Blackout Kick and Rising Sun Kick are both pretty essential to your rotation as well, so you will want to generally hit these as often as possible, basically as soon as they come off of cooldown. Then you're going to want to fill with Spinning Crane Kick while weaving in a Rushing Jade Wind to refresh the buff. What a lot of people find attractive about Brewmaster is that while there are rules to follow, the rotation is pretty free-flowing and lenient on what abilities you can hit in a certain order. If you maintain your Russian Jade Wind buff and your Breath of Fire debuff, you're just going to want to make sure you hit these abilities as soon as they're off CD. Brewmaster cooldowns are quite strange, but I wanted to talk about each one you have and the best way to optimize them in the most general sense. The list of defensives you should have access to include, but are also not limited to, Diffuse Magic, Dampen Harm, Fortifying Brew, Invoke Nizao the Black Ox, and Zen Meditation. And for this, I'm also going to leave Bone Dust Brew and Weapons of Order out, since while they do provide a minor damage reduction or healing, they're mostly for DPS. Let's start with Diffuse Magic, though. This is an insanely powerful 60% magical damage reduction, but it will do almost nothing for you when it comes to mitigating physical blows. You should try to frequently use this when taking multiple casts or a dot is applied to you. What's really cool about this ability is it can also deal a ton of damage if used at the right time, since it doesn't just provide a damage reduction, but will also reflect any magical damage over time effects that you have on you and apply it back to the caster. It's like a complicated version of Spell Reflect. Dampen Harm is another really powerful cooldown. This will reduce the damage of each hit you receive that fluctuates based on the size of the hit. Larger tank busters or large magical abilities will be reduced up to a sizable 50%. This can be flexible in a lot of different situations, but typically should be used on cooldown to help smooth out your damage intake. Fortifying Brew can be a tricky and layered cooldown to understand because it is a baseline cooldown of 6 minutes, but it will be reduced every time you keg smash. This, at a base level, increases your max health by 15% and reduces the damage you take by 20%. This might seem weak for being such a long cooldown, but it's amplified by a few different talent options. You can either opt in to have it reduced at a base value, or allowing it to increase your dodge and armor for the duration. Through your general rotation, this will typically be turned into a 2.5 to 3 minute cooldown if you play it with the reduced cooldown talent. If you decide to play Iron Shell Brew, it will be near a 4 minute CD. This ability should be used often in almost every other pull, rotating between Damp and Harm and Fortifying Brew. Invoke Nazao the Black Ox is arguably one of your worst defensive cooldowns, but luckily it doubles as a small offensive cooldown as well. The Black Ox will essentially take some of your stagger away from you, in turn soothing out the damage intake and damage over time during periods of larger damage influx. This should be used aggressively and can be paired with other defensive cooldowns if necessary. Your last large defensive cooldown is Zen Meditation, and it's very niche, especially if you're not talented into Fundamental Observation. The reason I say that is because any melee attack taken during the channel will cancel the channel, removing the buff. On top of that, it's extremely long cooldown at 5 minutes. This means that you're only really going to be able to practically use it on very large boss hits or while kiting casters to help stay alive. This is a primary example here in Halls of Valor Dungeon on the boss Herja. She's going to cast this massive tank frontal at me, and I'm going to absorb the blow by using Zen Meditation. This is definitely an ability that takes practice using, but can be very powerful in very particular situations. And yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. I wanted to try to keep this guide as short as possible, but I could have easily made this a one hour guide talking about all the little nuances, but I'm going to save that for another day. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or join my discord and I'll do my best to answer them. If you ever want to see me burn some keys live, come check me out on Twitch. Those links are in the description below. Massive shoutouts to Linus, Brian, and Swolbear, along with all my other lovely Patreons, because without their support there'd be much less of whatever you call this, so thank you guys. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.